Less symmetry, more symmetry. Less symmetry, more symmetry. Welcome to the Bottom Turtle Channel. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm theoretical physicist Dr. Shannon Ray. And in my last video, I made some pretty bold claims about how I'm the only person who understands entropy. And I looked at a conversation between Leonard Susskind and Kurt Jimengel on the Theories of Everything podcast to see how a leading physicist would describe entropy. And of course, uh, Leonard leaves out one of the main elements that I think is the most important, and that is the concept of symmetry. But also, this makes a connection with resolution or the concept of resolution. So in this video, you're going to see how I conceptually get to the idea that entropy implies symmetry and symmetry implies entropy. So with that, let's jump into the video. So the first thing you need to understand why entropy implies symmetry is what is symmetry. And to do that, I just want to talk about what a symmetry transformation is. So you're asking the question, how do you know that two things are symmetric? Well, you can understand that in terms of a symmetry transformation. And the concept of a symmetry transformation is very simple. It's simply the idea that if you do a transformation, you can't tell that anything has happened at all. That's it. For example, imagine there is a circle and then imagine that at the center of the circle is an axis and I can rotate the circle about that axis in either a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. If it's a perfect circle and you're rotating it about its axis, you can't tell that anything is happening at all. That's the nature of a symmetry transformation. In fact, this example that I just gave is actually called a U1 symmetry group. In physics and mathematics and theoretical physics, U1 symmetry is very well known. It's usually associated with phase, for example, in quantum mechanics or in electromagnetism. So this is a very common symmetry. Another example is you can imagine a square. And again, imagine a axis at the center of the square. And I can rotate that square clockwise or counterclockwise 90 degrees. And if I were to rotate the square 90 degrees when you're not looking, and when you turn around, you look at the square, you wouldn't be able to tell anything has happened. So 90 degree rotations of a square is another symmetry transformation because I did something, but you can't tell that anything has happened. That's it. That's the idea. And that's the conceptual essence of the concept of symmetry. And so it's this conceptual essence that is captured by a many to one mapping. In my last video, I talk about the essence of this symmetry that you get from, say, Boltzmann's entropy comes from the truth of a many to one mapping. And so now that we've established what a symmetry transformation is, I now want to explain to you how the Boltzmann entropy is essentially quantifying the amount of symmetry there is within a system given some known information. In the conversation between Leonard Susskind and Kurt Jimengel, they talk a lot about the idea of entropy and microstates and macrostates. So what are macrostates and microstates? Well, macrostates are low resolution data and microstates are higher resolution data. So for every macrostate, there are many microstates consistent with that macro data. And so I remember when I was an undergraduate, I had a book called Thermal Physics by Daniel V. Schroeder. And in chapter two of his book, he uses an example of flipping a bunch of coins to conceptually explain Boltzmann's entropy or to conceptually explain the idea of macrostates and microstates. The idea is, is imagine someone has a penny, a nickel and a dime and they can flip these coins in sequence. So they flip the penny first, then the nickel and then the dime. And all of these coins can either land heads or tails. So you can get a sequence like heads, heads, heads. You can get heads, tails, heads. You can get heads, heads, tails. You know, all the sequences or combinations that you can get of flipping those coins. And so in this case, there are eight different combinations that you can get. So in Daniel's example, he uses the information about the number of heads one gets during a sequence of flipping these coins as macro states and a specific sequence as a microstate. And we can understand how the number of heads is low resolution data and how a specific sequence of what one got is high resolution data due to the relationship of a many to one mapping. So say that there's Alice and Bob and Alice is the one flipping the coins and say that she only tells Bob 
that she observed two heads. She doesn't tell you which sequence she got. So with that information, she could have got heads, heads, tails. She could have got heads, tails, heads. Or she could have got tails, heads, heads. So Bob knows for a fact that she didn't get tails, tails, heads. But he doesn't know if, he, if she got any of those other three sequences. Therefore, the information in the number of heads has as many possible microstates that could be consistent with it. So it's low resolution data because if I only know the information about the number of heads, I don't know which microstate I have. But for each microstate, if I know which microstate I have, I know exactly which macrostate I have. And so the microstate contains all of the information of the macro state plus additional information. That is why it's higher resolution. If I only have the information in the macro state, then there are many micro states consistent with it. And for Bob, because the limit of his information is the number of heads, he can't say, given that information, which one of those micro states were more likely to produce the number of heads information that he has. Therefore, he has to treat all of these symmetrically. That's where the concept of symmetry comes into the idea of Boltzmann's entropy. Boltzmann's entropy quantifies the number of microstates associated with a macrostate. And we call this the multiplicity. Essentially, Boltzmann's entropy is merely a quantification of the amount of symmetry in a system, uh, given some information. That's where this, the idea of symmetry comes from. Now, this argument I'm making is not extraordinarily rigorous. And so to make clear the relationship between symmetry, as I've defined it earlier with a transformation in which you can't tell anything's happened and Boltzmann's entropy, I want to look at another example. Imagine that Alice can pass one of three microstates that's consistent with the macro data of observing two heads to Bob. But before the sequence reaches Bob, it passes through a low resolution filter so that Bob can only see the number of heads that are in the sequence. In this case, Alice could switch which microstate she sends to Bob and from Bob's perspective, nothing is changing. This is because Bob cannot see beyond the resolution of the data that he has. So whenever Alice switches from one microstate to another, from his perspective, nothing is happening. This is what Leonard Susskind meant when he said that entropy is hidden information. Due to this concept of many to one mapping, you gain this concept of low resolution and high resolution. And beyond a low resolution limit, without high resolution, you can't tell anything has happened and the information is hidden from you. Given that situation, whenever you switch between high resolution data, you can't tell anything is happening, thus, a symmetry transformation is being performed. And this is how I connect symmetry and entropy together. And again, I, this is not a terribly rigorous way of doing it, but I like to think conceptually. I try to understand the conceptual essence of the equations and then think with those because that information is low resolution. It's, it doesn't have all of the details of the rigor of precise mathematical formulations, but it's easier to think with because you're just thinking in terms of these simple concepts. As I've just shown with these examples, the many to one mapping, which is the essence of the Boltzmann's entropy, leads to a lack of resolution, which creates symmetry. And this is really no different from the idea of a pixel. The whole point to a pixel is that within a single pixel, there's a single color. But that's not because the pixel is a true representation of the informational content within the region of the pixel. Instead, the single color is merely a reflection of the degree to which the image in that region has been resolved. If you add more pixels inside a single pixel, then each one of those pixels can have their own color, thus creating a high resolution image of that region. This is the nature of the many to one mapping because within the region of a pixel, there are many points, but they're all being given one color. So that one color is the macro data, which is the low resolution information. But like Bob, if someone were to start changing the colors beyond the resolution of the pixel, you wouldn't be able to tell anything is happening because you only have the resolution up to the information associated with the pixel. And this is, again, the idea of hidden information in entropy. Keep in mind that the purpose of this video is to explain why I think 
entropy implies symmetry and symmetry implies entropy. And this isn't some sort of rigorous formulation of the idea. It is merely my thought process and how I build the intuitions for the type of calculations that I do. My process is to think conceptually and build intuition. But once I build that intuition, I then have to verify that it's correct by doing a calculation. And that is precisely what I did in my paper, A Differential Geometric Approach to Quantum Ignorance Consistent with Entropic Properties of Statistical Mechanics. I had this intuition about this idea of symmetry and entropy. And it was, and it was merely the idea of this. More information, less information. Less symmetry, more symmetry. And that was the entire intuition that I built. If you look back to the video, you can understand how that's all it is. This right here, the center, this is the symmetry. See, <laughs> that's the idea. And so the entire idea can be just broken down into this. That's it. In the case of quantum mechanics, the information that I have is contained within our quantum states, which we call density operators. And you can compute the amount of information in a density operator using the von Neumann entropy. So the idea was, is that for each density operator, there exist these things called purifications. And purifications are precisely higher dimensional, higher resolution quantum states that are consistent with the macro information contained within a density operator. So in quantum mechanics, you can always take a density operator that's not pure, meaning that it has some missing information, and you can assume that it came from some higher dimensional quantum state, and we call these purifications. And these pure states, these purifications, they have zero entropy. So that means they have zero missing information. But the problem is, is that for any density operator, there are many purifications associated with that density operator. And you can generate these purifications using these things called Lie group symmetries. And so you generate the purifications associated with the density operator using a symmetry group. And the idea was, is that because these are Lie group symmetries, for those who are in the know, for those who are physicists or mathematicians, these are continuous smooth manifolds which means that I can construct a metric tensor associated with them. With the metric tensor, I can create something called a volume element, and then I can integrate that volume element to get a volume. So I can construct the manifold of purifications and then compute their volume. And the idea was is that if I compare the von Neumann entropy to the volume, then I should get the same relationship, which is that if there's more information, then you have less symmetry, and if there's less information, then you have more symmetry. And so the idea is I'm merely using the Lie group symmetries to compute the size of that. And if I'm correct, then the behavior of my volume should be consistent with the behavior of the von Neumann entropy. And when I did the calculation and I was able to show that my prediction was correct, that's where I was like, ha, I think I have something here. And no other physicist, as far as I can tell, thought to do this calculation or even thinks of entropy in terms of symmetry. This idea that entropy implies symmetry and vice versa is unique to me as far as I can tell. So that's why I'm saying this. So I hope that from this video, you can be at least convinced, especially if you're a scientist, that I'm not a complete crackpot. And in subsequent videos, I'm going to go into more detail about my paper and my research and what I've done. Because this channel is not merely some channel to entertain you with. This channel is a research channel. And this is what differentiates it from every other YouTube physics channel that you'll find. All of the other ones are always reviewing knowledge that has already been known. But in this channel, we'll be reviewing cutting edge research. And I want you to participate in my research. If you're a physicist and you want to collaborate, reach out. If you're not a physicist and you're just interested and you want to go along, reach out. Because I want to change the way that we do physics and science. I want to work on the stuff that I think is important. And I don't want to have to be concerned about being paid by somebody else. Instead, every single time you like a video of mine or you subscribe to the channel, you're essentially donating to my research fund so that I can do the research that I think is most important. And I think that this research in particular will revolutionize the foundations of physics because I simply have not heard anyone else explain entropy this way. And using this, I also have a, 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 an, an entropic formulation of quantum mechanics that, again, when I explain it to other physicists, they seem to think that it's a pretty good idea. So that's the point of this channel, and I really appreciate your help. So don't forget to like this video and, subscri and subscribe to the channel. On top of all of this, 
This idea of symmetry is not only applied to physics, it goes far beyond that. And it's hard to explain everything associated with this concept in a single video. But if you're interested in hearing the relationship, the, the deeper implications of the concept of symmetry, then please check out my show, The Bottom Turtle Podcast. With that, stay turtling, my friends. Peace.